Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, great win on Saturday. Great come from behind win uh, by the guys. Uh, we showed a lot of resolve, a lot of toughness, uh, especially in the second half when we were down 11 and uh, continued to not flinch on the sideline and just believed that uh, we were going to find a way to get the thing in the fourth quarter and have a chance to win and had a big drive and, and got the touchdown and got the two-point conversion uh, with Will to cut it to three. And I thought our defense did a really nice job in the fourth quarter. I think uh, we had a couple of picks and, and uh, in the third, one in the third, one in the fourth, and, and finished with a, uh, a couple of punts. So we played well finally at the end on defense and then uh, had a nice drive um, after the muff punt to get the touchdown to go up. And that was uh, obviously a big big sequence that but uh happy for our seniors happy for all the kids from kansas to get that win and now we've turned our attention to a really good iowa state team um they're playing really well and uh i think coach campbell's done a phenomenal job um he always does and and this year you can you can see how much they've gotten better and better each week uh and it looks like we're gonna have a, a fun weather day here on saturday so it will be a uh, late November game here at the Bill. It'll be a lot of fun. How do you uh, feel about your team's ability to zero back in on the task at hand after such an emotional high? Um, you know, that's kind of been the story of our whole season. You know, you know whether it's following up a, a big win to a tough loss to whatever it may be. You know, like we talked in the locker room after the game, uh, now it's our senior day, and it's it's our chance to honor our seniors, and uh, it's going to be emotional. Uh, I know the guys are going to be fired up and ready to play. I know Iowa State's going to be fired up and ready to play. It's a great rivalry. It's a great game. And so um, now it's the same thing we talk about every week, one day at a time, keep attacking the prep and give ourselves a chance to be successful on Saturday. And what's the status on Uso after his injury? Yeah, he'd probably be day to day. I don't know. He's got a chance maybe. Um, uh, he didn't practice yesterday. We'll see how he does throughout the week. Has there been a steady resolve about this defense, not just last week, but throughout the season, that things would come along and solve the issues? Yeah, we're getting we're getting better. We've we've seen that. We kind of knew that um, some of the things that uh, we struggled with early on, we we started to clean up. Um, you know, and, and uh, appreciate Coach Standard. Our linebacker rooms decimated with injuries, like a lot of teams are. So we're not making any excuses, but I think. Uh, our guys have done a great job of next man up mentality in the linebacker room. And um, uh, Bo Palmer played an excellent second half uh, when he got a lot more snaps. Uh, Austin Romaine uh, is going to play a bunch. This, we'll keep rotating those two guys. They're they're both uh, guys that uh, you know backed up Daniel and then backed up Jake, and and they're they're playing good football. But uh, I was just excited that uh, we were finally able to get some stops, and we finally got him into some third and. and longer situations where we were able to make some plays. How are you able to kind of dictate the tempo of a game when you guys come out and score first? How were we able to dictate the tempo? Well, it's just something of a mindset of, of us um, getting the football and doing something with it and, and being in an attack mode. And I think Colin has done a really good job of, of getting those players in an attack mode. And, and Will's been in an attack mode to say, you know, we need to do something when we get the ball and uh, to start with. And, and we've been successful when we've been able to score first. Uh, doesn't mean we're, like here we were down in the game like we've been down in other games when we've scored first. But uh, um, our guys just want that mentality of getting the ball and trying to put it in early in the game. And as quiet as DJ Giddens is, what do you think his response would be to a thousand yard season? I don't know where is he at anyway. Is he there? Is he close? I don't even know. Yeah, <laughs> he's uh that that's DJ. DJ's just he just battles uh and and I, th I he's playing really well. He's doing what I thought he would do uh, as far as as the season went on, get better and better. And I tell you what, he's getting some tough yards and he's running through contact and um, exciting to see him continue to gain confidence, get better and better. You mentioned the weather on Saturday. How early in this week do you kind of game plan around that and say we're going to do this based on the weather report or do that? Um, you always look at it. Uh, offense will do some wet ball things um, each day this week. Uh, I, I By the time we practice right now, it's dark anyway, so it's already a little coolness in the air. It's going to be windier today, so we, we get acclimated. I mean, we use we're at the indoor, but both groups – 
go outside. We don't stay in the indoor. Offense goes outside for a little bit, then defense. So we, we get acclimated. We've done that this whole year, even the – the Houston week where it was it was in the 30s as well we were in and out and so um, you know our, our guys are are used to it and um, but we've got to do some things with wet balls for sure there are quite a few scenarios that could either have you guys playing for a spot in the Big 12 championship game or already eliminated heading into kick- kickoff do you want your guys paying attention to that or completely yeah. ignore no nah, we don't pay any attention to it you know we've navigated it really well the last two weeks when everybody was trying to stuff it down our throat of what it was and all our kids did is go out and play and win two big games. Um, Coach, oh, oh, one more. I also want to ask about the uh, Randon Platner. He was uh, right in the center of the celebration in Lawrence with the man and everything. It seems like yep. he has a real knack for doing that. Um, after Charismatic big wins. guy, old Randon. Um, <laughs> it was not surprising that um, I don't know if they asked him to go up there or if he moved Dr. Trace down and said, it's my turn. Um, to lead this band, but that's that's Randon. Uh, somebody did he do that last year too? So so he just wanted his one one shining moment that he had. Um, but uh, I, that was a, a cool cool time because they where our band was at was where we exited the field, right where our locker room was at. A lot of fun. Uh, so appreciate uh, the pride and so appreciate Dr. Trace. It was a, a great evening with them. Iowa State was picked for the lower part of this conference, and they've really shown to be a good football team. What do they do that is troublesome? Um, don't believe everything you, you hear and, and see early in the season because uh, I'll tell you another team, and that was uh, West Virginia. And I saw Neil at, at Big 12 Media Day, and I said, Neil, you're going to surprise a lot of people. You're going to have a dang good football team. And he kind of smiled at me, and, and Neil's having a heck of a year. And I just – I know the way um, – Matt coaches. I know the way Matt develops guys at, at, at Iowa State. Uh, I've got so much respect uh, for Coach Haycock on the defensive side. They just do such good things on both sides, and they never beat themselves. They're sound in what they do. They're really good on special teams. They don't give the ball away. They take it away. They make you earn everything. Um, and then they can methodically – put drives together and keep your defense on the field. They've got big play capabilities with a number of running backs uh, and wide receivers. And um, j- you can tell just how much those guys have improved. And uh, uh, they play f- they play hard. I mean, that's th- this is going to be a physical game. These two teams uh, are two of the more physical teams in the league. Is that why so many of these Farmageddon games are so competitive? It comes down to physical play? Yeah, I, I think that's a big thing. And it doesn't matter – if it's a high-scoring game or a low-scoring game like last year, um, typically it comes down to a possession or two, and um, it uh, it is. It's going to be physical, and we've got to tackle really well, and we've got to block and get off blocks well. You went to a young offense coordinator two years ago. They did it this season, uh, and it seems to be something that's going on in college football, a lot of younger OCs. Uh, what are the advantages of that, and why is this occurring? Um, I never thought of it like that. Um I could see somebody as old as you would think of it like that. Um, so, uh, you know, I, probably relatability as much as anything. And, you know, I, I he had him on his staff. I had CK on the staff. So I just saw the interaction with athletes on a daily basis. Um, and uh, it's, it's all about relationship building and then uh, being a great leader. Um, you're going to see another freshman quarterback. That's first question. Have you ever had a season where you played this many freshman quarterbacks? And then how yeah. good is Beck? Yeah, he's he's playing really well. Um, he probably struggled a little bit early on, like a lot of freshmen do at every position. It just gets magnified at quarterback. Um, but as you watch him from game one, two, and three, like we've in the breakdown to where he's at now, playing with a ton of confidence, got a got really good arm talent I think he does a really good job with play action things hiding the football um, in control confident I haven't paid attention to what year quarterbacks are um, that we play I haven't really because there's just good football teams in our league but uh, I, I think he's a, a really talented guy he's you know, got a football pedigree uh, in his background and, and he's a competitor and have conversations already started with, with the guys that, that could come back? Not till next no. week. Yeah, could you just talk a little bit about 
about the senior class yeah. and, and what they've, they've Well, meant. it's fun for me because I've been with a, a lot of them all five years that I've been here. Um, some of them came back for a six-year, which uh, I, I'm so thankful to spend another uh, year with those guys. And um, they've been through so many of those guys, those offensive linemen especially, uh, have been through so much um, with uh, our staff. Um, you know, I don't even know how many guys are walking, and there's a lot of guys that are walking that have to make a decision once they're done if they're going to come back for another year. But there's a, a number of guys that, that we know are going to move on that uh, you know went through uh, a good time in 2019 to a, a tough experience in the pandemic year to rebuilding this the way we want it to in 21, 22, and now 23 to put three really good seasons back to back. And I told the guys um, on Monday, the guys that have been here with us all this time, that you've really, these guys have put K-State on the national map. And I think that's, it's really cool for a legacy for that group. Um, no matter how this thing ends, as far as if we finish this week in the regular season, if we get the opportunity to play for another week in the Big 12 championship, to play in a bowl game, whatever it may be, um, be proud of the legacy because you left the place a lot better um, after your time here. I know you said you won't have the discussions till next week, but have some of them already indicated what they're doing? It's a or? good question. Um, I, I don't get into it until the end of our season. And if we play in the Big 12 championship game, it'll be the following week. And I just have never, since this whole thing started, a few years ago, I've never felt it appropriate to talk to a guy until our regular season is done with. Obviously before a bowl game, but whether that's the end of the season or after the championship game, I just don't think it's appropriate to uh, uh, let them enjoy this process and then um, we'll do it before we prep for a bowl game. This is a while back, but a lot of people were very upset to learn that in 2027, K-State and Iowa State will not be playing. Was K-State ever given an official... Um, I guess statement or told by the Big Twelve why that's not happening. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you, and I, I I haven't looked that far ahead. I did see that it was on there, but I haven't really paid any attention to it. Um, it's going to be hard, guys. It, you know, if we want to keep certain rivalries, yeah, I'd love to play Iowa State. I'd love to play Kansas. Shoot, I'd love to play Texas Tech. I'd like to play Baylor and TC, but you can't anymore. I mean, that's just that's college football now, and. Um, so that's way above um, uh, my pay scale and administration. Let let the conference office ads figure that stuff out, um, and um, you know we'll, we'll see how the chips fall come twenty twenty seven. I don't know what's going to happen. Coach, you talk all the time about it's hard to win a college football game, and you've been successful doing that here at home all season. What's that say about the consistency and some of those intrinsic values that this team has that allows them to be so consistent at home? Yeah. Um, I wish we could bottle it up and have it every game, you know, uh, and, and keep it when we're here. Our guys have really um, loved the, the fan base that's come out in droves every week here. Um, they've had an excitement of, of playing here uh, every Saturday. I really think and believe that us not practicing out there every day like we used to because that was the only opportunity place we had other than the old indoor that us being at the new indoor and the outdoor field get some excitement for our guys to come down here do the walkthrough on friday and then play here on saturday i think that gives them some another part of excitement of being back uh, in the stadium just for games and uh um you know our our older guys uh, know that uh, it, it's it's hard in that locker room when you lose on the road. We, we've had a couple of those times, and it's really hard. It's almost devastating when you're at home to do that with our great fan base and the people that come out. And so they've um, really attacked their preparation every week, but uh, at, at home they're really excited about uh, playing in front of these great fans. To um, address the senior class maybe in a little different way. We know the state of college football right now, the transfer portal and everything like that. And in the spirit of Thanksgiving, how thankful are you that all these guys choose to come back to Kansas State? Yeah, really thankful. And I think it, it's a, you take it a couple of ways. One, they want to be around each other. We've got a really close-knit group of guys. Everybody talks about 
locker rooms that are close on different teams. Um, it, it is family down there in our locker room with our players. They there are no clicks. You know, everybody from different position groups gets along really well. They have a lot of fun together. You see that on the road. Uh, and then I credit our our assistant coaches. You know, you look at Connor Riley. Uh, the relationships that he's built with those offensive linemen. They wanted to come back and play for Riles. They wanted to be together with Coach Riley, and it goes with all of our other coaches as well, but that's just one position that I look at because there's so many of those guys that are that are six-year guys that um, tells you a lot about uh, the staff we have, but it tells you more about the, the, the character and integrity of our players and, and how they, uh, they know they got a really good thing in that locker room and they, they want to enjoy it as long as they can. What's impressed you the most about what what Damian and Javon have done behind Uso this season? Um, just consistency and and steadiness, and whether or not they're playing ten plays a game or thirty plays a game, um, they've given us really good snaps in there. Uh, and we've rotated guys. We've kept, you know, they both have been nicked up a little bit. Damian's back full go now, but um, they've both been nicked up. It's it's allowed us to keep them fresher at practice, having all three of those guys. Uh, in there some, um, and uh, they, they know what we're doing. Damien's been here a long time. He knows our defense inside and out. Javon's been here a shorter period of time, but but has, has really fit in and learned what we're doing and has been really impactful. So it, we're, we're lucky we have depth there. I was going to ask you about Jace Brown and what he's doing. Um, can you just kind of describe what his journey has been like this year? Yeah, impactful, that's for sure. Um, and um, just keep keep practicing, keep doing what you're doing, uh, and when your opportunity comes, make the most of it. And uh, you know, early in the early, early in the season, he wasn't a part of the rotation, but he kept doing things at practice. And when when I say doing things at practice, when we'd go K State versus K State, he's running by really good players, and we's like, yeah, this kid's got really special speed. We think he can do some things, and we start throwing him on some go balls and stuff, and then realizing he can be an every down wide receiver for us. And uh, he's made some really big plays last week, the third and eight, where he kind of ran a, a jerk route or a return route um, uh, on a big play and caught it and ran away from the guys. That was huge, as well as the first play of the game. We thought we had a touchdown um, because we, we knew what the coverage was. And uh, we'll put a good ball to him, and, and we get a 40-yard gain or something on first down. Um, those are plays that um, – um, you know, we're so thankful to have him because he's got that extra gear and uh, he's had a really good freshman season. I was going to ask you also to maybe tell us a little bit about Bo Palmer's path because not even not anybody really yeah. talked about him in the beginning and here he is a major contributor late. Well, and that's uh, – Bo's been a major contributor on special teams, but we had – uh, a, a number of linebackers with experience that were coming back, so he was going to be a special teams guy. And all of a sudden we lose Daniel Green, and now he's maybe a role player a little bit, uh, getting a few snaps, and all of a sudden we lose Jake Clifton, and that role goes up a little bit more. And um, he just comes to work every day and practices his tail off and, and learns from, from – even though he's as old as, as some of these guys, he doesn't have the game experience as Dez and, and Austin Moore – so he keeps learning from those guys. And um, we wouldn't be where we're at without Bo Palmer right now. You know, we lost Terry Kirksey to an injury, who is another Mike backer. And um, so Bo has just kind of climbed that depth chart and has made really big plays for us. And I thought he played uh, really well on Saturday. He got our linebacker of the game. And uh, rightfully so, he deserved it. He made a couple big time plays. Chris, in your time here, when you think about preparing for Iowa State, is it? Just go back to the file folder from the year before because you, you start at the same place with yeah. them every year, or, or has it changed? Um, you always go back to the folder, and then you see how did they attack us? How did we attack them? What were the things that hurt us? What were the things that um, we did okay? Uh, and um, what are the things that have hurt us then? Then you look at you – because know, they run a similar defense t to us. They're, they're doing it a little bit differently than we are, but the – the three three five is is kind of the extent of it, but uh, you know, just trying to see how people are attacking them, and how people are attacking us, because as you know, like last year was a great example. Yards and, and points were at a premium last year, and you know, first downs were hard to get, and um, 
ah, who knows how this game's going to play out. But uh, both teams and both staffs know each other so well. And so who can make those other adjustments and maybe some wrinkles to the previous game plans? Coach, you get three turnovers Saturday, another fumble that they recovered. Do you kind of have scoop and potential score parameters that you try to set? Yeah. Um, great example was the uh, the block PAT, PAT return for two. You can't go down in that situation. You, you, it, you have to find a way to stay on your feet or fumble the ball and let another player pick it up and try to score. Um, we, we should have and wish we would have tried to dive on the one fumble they had um, because it wasn't truly in the open field. It may have, you may have thought it was in the open field, but it was between the hashes, and we just got to pick that one up uh, or, or dive on that. But, uh, you know, two-point conversions, we had an interception with Siegel a week before on a two-point play. You try to stay alive as much as you can. But, yeah, we, we work those situations, usually in fall camp. You don't get a lot of chances to work those in the season. But it was a huge play. I mean, that was a difference in the game is Nate – um, having an unbelievable individual effort and in blocking a PAT and then blocking the kicker so that Ke Keenan could get it, made a guy miss and scored. Chris, if, again, you've done this long enough, and you may get asked in week one, what's your team's personality? And I know you've typically said, well, we have to wait and see. Yeah. Can you kind of define the evolution of this team and what it was against SEMO yeah. and what you are right now? Um, boy. We needed, we needed that signature win like we had last week. I thought that was important for this team because our wins have all become on blowouts, which is kind of crazy to think about when you've won as many games as we have and they've all been blowouts in the wins and the losses have all been on the last play or the last drive. So I thought it was really important for this team and, and their legacy to have one of those wins where it um, didn't look good, found a way to come from behind and then held the lead, kept – you hang on to the ball for the last five minutes and 33 seconds with the offense on the field when they know what you're going to do. That's pretty impactful. That's pretty cool as far as a legacy. And, you know, the story's still being written for us. we still got more chapters, and this is a huge one. So um, we're still kind of figuring out what that final legacy is going to be. But uh, it was a huge chapter last week.